Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the channel. The title of this review is a little bit of a spoiler, but it's completely well-deserved, especially for a laptop like this, the CubeThinker i35. In terms of specifications you get for the price, the CubeThinker is actually pretty decent. You get a KP Lake Core M7Y30, 8GB of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD, and of course, that beautiful Surface screen, all for 650 bucks. I've seen the price dip to 615 with a coupon, and that makes it almost as cheap as the last generation Xiaomi Air 12, and at least 300 bucks cheaper than the Surface laptop when you consider that this 615 is after tax and shipping. Cube has to make sure this laptop presents a good user experience, and they obviously did or I wouldn't call this incredible, so let's begin. The build quality here is, well, incredible. It's made out of magnesium alloy, and dare I say it feels a lot sturdier than the Xiaomi Air 12. The Cube Thinker occupies a much larger footprint than the Xiaomi because of the 13.5 inch Surface Book screen, and there is a significant bezel around the screen also which does make me a little disappointed. The laptop feels hefty at 1.6 kilos or 3.5 pounds, but it does feel nice carrying this laptop around. We have a decent selection of ports here, two USB 3 ports and one on each side, USB-C port that can do data transfer and charging at the same time, and a headphone jack as well. That being said, I was still hoping for a full-size HDMI port and a micro SD card slot as well, but there are enough ports on this laptop. Moving on to the keyboard, the keys are plastic and they aren't the greatest quality material, but the typing experience is still fine. I can type at my max speed for pretty long periods of time, so no complaints. Well, I do have one. The power button is located right here, and I've reached up and hit it multiple times when I wanted to hit backspace instead, so it's definitely quite annoying for the first few days, but I got used to it pretty quickly. The trackpad here is spacious with a fingerprint sensor in the top left corner. It's accurate and fast. Multi-finger gestures are supported as well. Two-finger scrolling and edge is fairly good, but in Chrome it's a lot less smooth and there's virtually no inertia. The trackpad is mostly good except in Chrome, but it's definitely usable overall. The fingerprint sensor here is fast and accurate as well, and it's fully integrated into Windows Hello. So the best part of the Cube Thinker is the beautiful display, no question about that. I reviewed a lot of devices, so you would think that nothing much surprises me anymore, but every time I look at a Pixel Sense display, I'm still dumbfounded by just how good the screen looks. I'll get to the single downside of the screen out of the way first, and that will be the minimum brightness. It's pretty blinding even in dark situations. That super high resolution makes the screen incredibly sharp, and the colors are incredibly vivid as well. Everyone who looked at these pics on the screen were floored by how amazing it looked, even people who use MacBooks with Retina displays as well. Max brightness tops out at around 450 nits, which is very good for a laptop, but you'll pretty much be using this at a max of 75% brightness to avoid killing your eyes anyway. The 3x2 aspect ratio is also incredibly conducive to productivity or just simple web browsing. You do get so much more vertical real estate for things like emails, PDFs, Excel, but it does come with a downside. You get some pretty severe letterboxing when watching movies and TV shows. Not really that big an issue for me personally though. The last thing I want to talk about is the digitizer. It's very sensitive and you don't have to tap the screen too hard to get your finger recognized. And it also uses an N-Trig digitizer, which means that Surface Pens and Chewy Pens both work on this, but I honestly don't see the point of using a pen if the screen doesn't even rotate completely flat. The speakers here are definitely above average, but they still trail pretty far behind the best laptop or tablet speakers I've heard. It gets pretty loud, but audio quality on the other hand is just okay. Mids and highs are relatively clear, but sadly there isn't too much bass. Here's some sample audio for you to listen to. So the battery life here is definitely the weak link in the laptop. With a relatively small 10,000 mAh battery, you can expect somewhere along the lines of 6 hours of screen on time when doing light things like web browsing, Microsoft Office, or watching local video files. Any kind of intense software like video editing, photo editing, or even gaming, and your max battery life barely scratches 3 hours. I tried playing Call of Duty at max brightness and battery life was exactly an hour and 45 minutes, so pretty abysmal. It took about 2 hours to fully charge up the laptop either through the DC port or the USB-C port. The laptop comes with full activated English Windows 10 and the performance on the CubeThinker is great. The KB Lake Core M combined with the 256GB SSD performs pretty well even with that insanely high 3000x2000 resolution. 
everyday things like web browsing in Chrome or Edge or Microsoft Office, email, they all zip along nicely, no slowdowns detected. Moving on to more intense software like video editing in Premiere, and I could edit 1080p stuff pretty well, 4K footage was choppy even in the timeline and rendering took forever. I also tried installing the educational version of AutoCAD, but it kept telling me the computer was below the minimum spec, so unfortunately I could not get that to install. Finally, with gaming, you can actually game at that 3000 by 2000 resolution if you bump the settings down in some games like Call of Duty and even League, but games like Left 4 Dead 2 only ran at 1920 by 1200 at lowest settings. The left side of the laptop gets warm during normal use and gets pretty stinking hot if you do intense stuff for anything longer than 20 minutes, but it doesn't get hot enough to burn you. I recommend you guys try out Chris's thermal mod, I'll link the video up above. I got some pretty weird Wi-Fi speeds, maxing out the upload but getting less than 10% of my maximum download, I'm still looking into that and I'll report back later. Bluetooth also works with all my headsets, the USB ports are capable of transferring at USB 3 speeds. So we have a 2 megapixel webcam located above the display here, and the quality is okay, it's pretty much good enough for video calls, and that's about it, you shouldn't really expect too much else from the webcam here. So I named this review incredible, and I really do mean that in the sincerest way possible. Sure, there are things that could be improved, for example, the trackpad could have been improved, the battery life is a little bit too short for me, but then again, this is probably still the best laptop to come out of China pretty much ever. If I was allowed to change a few things, I would definitely double the battery capacity, I would improve the trackpad, and I might also get rid of that end tray digitizer as well, because what's the point of having a stylus if your laptop can't even rotate all the way back? That makes it kind of dumb. At the time of this review, I'm 95% sure I'm gonna replace my current daily driver, the Xiaomi Air 12 with the CubeThinker i35. I'm still a bit iffy on that battery life. It gets about an hour less than the Xiaomi laptop, but I think I'll manage. Let me know what you think about this laptop, and if you want to know more about the CubeThinker i35 laptop, you can click on the link down below. Likes and subs would be super awesome. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yay!